Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and in this video, I'm just going to have a quick look at a question I'm asked quite often is about how do I display large prints that I make. Now, the classic way is to frame them, put them behind glass, various things like that. But when you've got prints uh, this size, for example, and this one is some uh, some small, tiny dried flowers actually off one of the plants behind me here, um, much magnified. This is printed on a 24 inch printer. And the question is, um, how do I display it? Well, as I say, classically, you would have a frame made to the size you want, or you produce the picture to the size you want, and then you'd just have it framed. Uh, but that's a bit expensive, particularly when you get to very large prints of this size. And I say, this is just a test image I, I made when I had a large printer here to review. Um, what about something like this? Now, this is, this normally hangs upstairs in our house. It's uh, in Colorado. Um, it's very early morning. Um, look over a misty lake. We've got mountains in the background. Uh, Rocky Mountains National Park is just over the ridge there. And, you know, this is one that Karen particularly liked. It also, and this should never be underestimated when you're selling pictures, it matches her color scheme for the room. So, I, I, you, as a photographer, you think, I'm not having my pictures chosen by how they match color scheme, but the client is always right in this respect, particularly when it's Karen doing a decoration and she's uh, responsible for the decoration around here as well. This particular one has been printed on large format printer, uh, quite a big printer. I think it was a 44 inch printer, um, a Canon one. I tested it a while ago, but how to display it. I really don't want a sheet of glass this size. Now you could look at getting acrylic, but that's also expensive. That also has reflection problems. You'll notice that this one, there are no reflections off it. It was printed on a heavy baryta style paper, much like this image here, but it has a slightly duller look to it. What have I done with it? Well, I took it to a local sign making company and had it laminated onto Fomax or Foam Core. has different names around the world, the actual stuff, but it's a, it's a rigid board and it's laminated onto it. The lamination means that it also has a thin lamination of a slightly matte, in this case, clear plastic film over the top of it. That means I can touch it like this. We can, you can dust it, you can wipe it down. Great. What about the frame? Well, the frame, I just took the image that had been produced and laminated onto the foam board, took it to a custom frame maker, and they made a frame for it. So this is a custom frame made at a picture framers uh, to the size required for this. If I turn this round, you'll be able to see that it has two pieces of wood attached to the back of it. That is because Fomex like this, or this foam board, is prone to warping. This keeps the whole thing rigid. Um, this particular piece of wood is part of two slats of wood which are grooved so they hang on the wall. Uh, so talk to the picture framers and they'll know about this sort of stuff. It's standard display mounting equipment. Uh, uh, technique that you get. So it's screwed on and it's also secured with hot melt glue. Uh, so this is the back. This just slots on the wall on a batten that is mounted on the wall. This batten rests on top of it. They're grooved slightly so it holds it in place. You can see it's got pitch framing tape around the edge. Uh, the actual uh, frame itself has got the little tangs in it that are bent in place to hold the print in place. So there's the actual stuff that the print is mounted on. The print is a paper print, but I have a picture which is perfectly usable in the house. Now, would I exhibit stuff like this? Well, actually I have, because uh, people don't worry about it. Is this archival fine art? 
No, of course it isn't. It's not archived. Well, it probably outlasts me with the lamination, but I don't know. I certainly, although it's pigment ink, I certainly wouldn't sell it as archival. Now, this is a technique I've used for similar large pictures like this and larger ones still uh, that have been used in commercial premises. So you take, you print your picture normally, you take it to your local sign writer or specialist printers that can do the lamination. Didn't cost that much to be done. It's cut and trimmed. You can have it with a border if you want. This one's done flush. And then take the whole thing to a custom framers and they make this. Much cheaper and easier than glass. Uh, I can carry this back upstairs with no risk of worrying about damaging the glass in it or anything like that. The matte finish means that it works quite well. Uh, it's still got the intensity of colour that I got from the original Baraita paper. Uh, you could use a uh, fine art paper, anything for this, but it's, you know, it's about the picture that you want to show. Works well for black and white as well. And well, that's a relatively easy way of mounting large pictures and displaying pictures in a residential environment. Um, nobody's, I've, I've shown this one, i say I've used this in some exhibitions in the past. Nobody went up to the pictures and went, oh, do I don't know about that. Remember, people who buy pictures, people who are interested in the pictures, only photographers stuff their nose up and look into the pictures and look at detail. Real people aren't bothered about stuff like that. They are more interested as to what the picture's like, what it means to them, and stuff like that. Anyway, I hope that's of some interest. Uh, because I get a lot of people ask about how I display large pictures. If you've got any specific questions, feel free, just let me know. And, um, well, I might make use of our uh, new studio facility here a few more times. Thanks for watching. Oh, please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thanks.